I'm Kirk Harnack for the TELUS Alliance. Aristotle once said, in all his wisdom, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Well, some wise and very clever broadcast engineers in Australia have just turned Aristotle's wisdom into reality. Southern Cross Australia, or SCA, is the largest commercial radio network in Australia, stretching across four or five time zones depending on the season. SCA is now up and running with a reliable, flexible, continent-wide radio contribution and distribution network. Here are Steve Adler and Matt Stedman to tell us how it works. So we've just completed the SCARSAT project, which is about distribution of live network audio across our whole network of radio stations. So Southern Cross Stereo has um, 78 analog licenses across about 45 different cities. Um, and contribution of real-time live audio across our whole network is obviously really key to our radio business. So SCARSAT is a brand new way of uh, absolutely ensuring guaranteed relied reliable uh, delivery of that audio across that whole radio network. The need for the business uh, really was twofold. Um, our previous audio distribution system really was at end of life. I mean, we had some equipment, it was you know, probably around about 20 years old, old, to be man. honest, and, and still on the air, so a bit of a risk for the business. So that was one of the main drivers. I guess, like any good engineers, um, we had a good holistic look at it and thought to ourselves, well, we've got to replace it anyway. How on earth could we make it better? And, and I guess that really came out by the fact that we're all really experienced and been in the game a long time. And we also brought our content uh, brethren into the discussion, really to find out if we could make something better, what would that look like? So one of the prime aims of the system was to allow our content on air staff to actually drive the system. So just like we say to them, they select and schedule the music for their different radio stations every day. What we wanted to let them do was empower them to not only make the decisions about what programs are on their radio stations, but actually design a system that allowed them to drive that intuitively. You know, engineers are qualified to do engineering things and really to be tied up a lot of the time doing content things to really get to the end goal uh, really was wasteful. So now, as Matt alluded to, we only want to know about SCARSAT if there's something wrong with it. So when we embarked on this project, we were looking for ideally an off-the-shelf solution. We thought uh, there'd be other radio networks with the same challenge uh, that are looking for the same sorts of results. But after a good conversation with many, many vendors, we found some really good products and technology out there, but there was no single integrated solution that did exactly what we wanted no. in terms of delivering that quantity of audio in real time with the right reliability across that um, number of stations. So we ended up, after discussing with, uh, with many vendors, we partnered with um, ABC and we also partnered with Telos and worked with them on a solution which was really bespoke for the needs of our business. Um, however, the, the topology of it and the design of it is really quite uh, powerful yet simple and we think it's a, it's a good match for any, um, any business that might need real-time distribution. The old system was a satellite-based technology um, and, and satellite's not necessarily bad. Um, satellite is a really good point to multi-point distribution system. Two really big problems with satellite. Um, one is rain fade attenuation and you can get that on the uplink and of course the other is rain fade on the uh, on the downlink uh, those two things can uh, absolutely destroy uh, your signals i guess thirdly there is a thing called sun transition uh, where twice a year the sun will get behind the satellite and illuminate your dish with noise so of course it will stop at that point but that's absolutely predictable we owe it to our listener and to our, uh, our customers to have uh, continuous coverage. I mean, this is commercial radio and uh, you, you're there to sell commercial airtime as well as uh, provide fantastic programming. So technical continuity is incredibly important to us. So satellite was really one of the paths to get the signals um, from the uh, head ends out to uh, all the stations taking the program. And uh, we found another technology that uh, would marry absolutely beautifully with that. So the other half of the SCARSAT system, and this is the real power of the system, is utilising the new technologies available in the TELUS iPort codec, as well as receiving signals from the satellite path, yeah. we've also utilised the wide area network of our company to deliver the same audio streams to all of those received sites at the same time as the satellite signal gets there. So what that means is uh, the system is now completely fault tolerant because if we have an issue with that satellite, as Steve mentioned, we could have downlink uh, rain fade or we could have technical problems or sun transition. 
As long as that wide area network connectivity is there, the iPort codec receives a second copy of all that audio and you effectively have guaranteed delivery of that audio to all of those sites. So you're basically doubling your redundancy um, by using those two paths. So you have the first path of the satellite and the second path is the wide area network. And I guess we really uh, need to say the thing that makes this all work is the Telos iPort. I mean, it has the uncanny, unique ability to have two IP streams coming into it simultaneously and it just looks at it packet by packet. It looks at the CRC header, if there's something particularly wrong with it, it'll just take the packet from the other source and give you a completely seamless, hitless output. So the switching that Steve just mentioned isn't actually a switch, it's literally a packet by packet comparison. Um, there's absolutely no impact on the listener or even to the engineers. If we lose a, uh, a packet, we can generate alarms, of course. However, there's no impact at all on the um, on the on-air stream. Look, I guess the other thing to touch on there, as well as the audio, um, of course, the Telos iPort can uh, embed uh, and uh, and multiplex, for a better word, uh, all the uh, trigger commands that you need for your playout systems to play advertisements or promo spots or music or whatever it might be. So uh, we talked about the audio being protected. Well. All those triggers are equally protected in that, uh, in that stream. So the way the synchronisation of all of that metadata and pulses works with the audio is the TELUS iPort simply accepts all of those signals from the head end and multiplexes it into the one transport stream. Um, and then that's packaged up and sent on its merry way, of course, across those two paths. So all of that, as Steve said, is uh, as protected as the audio is from that dual path technology. And then that single transport stream is received at the uh, receiving iPort and unpacked and everything is therefore completely time-aligned at the other end. Mm. And that could be uh, a generic relay pulse from a playout system to start a commercial, or um, really powerfully, the, the iPort will also allow you to get generic UDP data streams, uh, regardless of, of what you're trying to interface. So we can have three separate UDP data channels uh, sent across the system, and again, that's all completely protected with the same dual path technology that the audio enjoys. Here in Australia, in summertime, we can have up to five different time zones across the country. So what we've done with our new ScarSat system, the Telos iPort actually has a solid state hard drive in it. And it actually records that transport stream that, that Matt just talked about. Um, and uh, you just dial in the delay that you want. So, you know, if you're in South Australia, you'd have half an hour. If you're in Western Australia, you would have uh, two hours or three hours, depending on daylight saving. So it just makes it really, really easy. Um, nothing's changed with the protection. Um, both uh, audio streams come in. The same protection packet by packet is still applied. That hitless stream is then applied to the hard disk and at the appropriate time comes off the hard disk and then sent off to the, uh, the, the decoder part of the codec and played out as the audio would be. So as we talked about before, um, uplink RAID fade is, is just probably one of the most difficult things to get around. So what we did here at Southern Cross Stereo, we decided we put two completely identical uh, uplinks in, but we uh, dispersed them geographically. So we have one of them in Sydney and the other one in Melbourne. Now, the beauty of this is um, every satellite that, uh, every geostationary satellite, should I say, that's in orbit actually has a beacon transmitter on it. And we monitor that signal strength, the field strength of that beacon on the ground in both Sydney and Melbourne. And we have remote control systems that uh, look at that and make a decision um, on when to switch sites. So if, for argument's sake, we're uplinking out of Sydney and it's raining really, really heavily, uh, we will see that attenuation on the downlink and we're pretty conservative. We say, well, if we see a 3 dB loss in signal, without question, uh, we will switch down to Melbourne. Uh, and that transition takes about one second. Um, in the meantime, all the receivers around the fleet take about two and a half to three seconds to relock. But again, we keep coming back to the dual stream technology. The WAN has still got the same copy of the audio on it. So the actual listener doesn't experience any loss whatsoever. Well, that's how we get around rain fade on the uplink. Matt, how do we actually accomplish the same thing on the wide area network? Yeah, the really cool thing about this system is each of those uplink sites are available at all times to the system. However, only one is ever radiating to the satellite, as Steve just explained. Only one of those sites also needs to provide the wide area network based streams as well. And we just thought, because we're good engineers, they should always kind of be in harmony, because that way you've always got one site that's completely on, radiating both the satellite and providing the wide area network streams by the computer network and another site that's in the standby mode. So the telemetry which we designed in-house to manage this uplink system 
also, uh, as it switches from, say, Sydney to Melbourne from a satellite point of view, it will then wait 30 seconds and actively tell the Sydney site to stop providing the WAN streams and switch the Melbourne streams on. So as long as those switches happen at slightly different times, uh, the process works really well and it means we always have one site completely on and the other side off and we can turn it off and do maintenance on it. So now that SCARSAT has been deployed and is on air, let me just walk you through what's actually uh, installed at each of these radio stations. So it's actually quite simple. We have uh, a Telos iPort audio codec, as we said, it's the heart of the system. It does uh, all the encoding and the decoding. Now, we made a pact at the start of this project that we wanted to do this properly with the right level of redundancy. A lot of our sites are unmanned from a, uh, from a content point of view and some of them don't even have engineers. So what we decided to do was actually put a backup Telos iPort at every single site. So if you were to walk in any of our radio stations, doesn't matter whether it's here in Adelaide or whether it's right in regional Western Australia, you'll see two Telos iPorts, um, one primary and one backup. And we also took the same approach with our satellite receivers. So we have uh, some Novra branded satellite receivers uh, and we have two of them at each site as well. So again, the system is completely fault tolerant. Uh, should we lose one iPort, it just fails to the backup iPort. And should we lose a satellite receiver, we still use the, uh, the alternate satellite receiver of course, while still protected by the wide area network, so we actually have multiple copies of the audio stream coming into each of those codecs. So to distribute live content across our 78 radio stations, unlike a lot of TV models or other radio networks, we have our audio sourced from many sites around the country in any given day. So as an example, on the Today Network, which, one was at, which is one of our um, music formats, we can source live content from, say, the Gold Coast between midday and four, and then we might want to take a show from Melbourne between 4 and 6 and then we might swap down to Sydney. So it's really quite a complex network of audio sources that we have to manage. The way we do this is we set up SCARSAT with 10 uh, sites that are configured to be contribution sources. So we can source audio from any of those radio stations onto any of the SCARSAT channels at any hour of the day. And previous to SCARSAT, this was a pretty mishmash network of ISDN and uh, IP-based codecs, and it was all completely scheduled and driven by engineering. It was quite a complex map to put together. So what we did with SCARSAT was chucked all that in the bin and had a single flat system that allowed any of our 10 contribution sites to contribute to any of those 17 SCARSAT channels any minute of every day. But as we said, we wanted this to be a very simple system for our on-air teams to drive. So again, we partnered with AVC who developed a custom scheduling software to drive the system. And we sort of based it around, we often say it looks like Microsoft Outlook. It's a calendar based system. It employs drag and drop object oriented methodology to get the programs in there. So content staff simply define what a program is called, drag it to where they want to, uh, to air it in terms of time of day, and then hit save and the system takes care of itself. This whole system fundamentally, as well as having a business genesis and um, a real whole pile of technical improvements, what it's really doing is it's freeing up engineers to do higher value engineering tasks and it allows a whole lot more flexibility for our creative people to be more creative. I think the first thing I'd say after watching this video, and we've piqued your interest, we are more than happy to demonstrate this to you. Um, I mean, it's all fine to go on the YouTube and tell you how fantastic it is. We, we stand by it. So if, you, if it interests you, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a satellite and WAN. It could be a WAN and WAN. It could be 3G, 4G and WAN. It, this is just a big Meccano set. Um, we, we've really done all the hard work for you. Um, it would be fair to say we had our trials and tribulations along the way. It probably took a lot longer than we thought it would take. But I guess that, that just is part and parcel of a bespoke system. But all that hard work's done now. Um, we have stable firmware in all the iPorts. We have a stable scheduling system. It really is pretty much off the shelf. Steve Adler tells me he'd like to talk with you about how their SCASAT system works. Steve thinks, and I have to agree, that the technology behind SCASAT is so flexible that it's perfect for all kinds of broadcasters around the world. Here's the contact information you'll want for Steve Adler at Southern Cross Osterio. You may also contact AVC in Auckland. And, of course, we at the TELUS Alliance would welcome a conversation with you as well. Thanks for your interest. I'm Kirk Harnack for the TELUS Alliance.